in apologetics, we have an argument, as you probably all know, called the steel man argument. And what that means is that it is the strongest argument that your adversary could muster. Honest arguers are going to use steel man because you want to represent the best the opposing side has to offer and then rebut it. Even make the argument better and then rebut it. That is what we do on this channel. And as far as I am aware of, one for Israel and Dr. Brown do as well. You have probably heard a lot about the straw man argument. You could only conclude that someone might be using a straw man because they were not using the steel man. But maybe, just maybe, the person, persons who are not using the steel man were just unaware that the steel man argument existed in that area. So there is always that perspective. But I do not think that we are dealing with that here. But who knows? Maybe just with Neil Tyson. When you are too afraid to debate, let me reframe that. When you consistently won't debate the best that Messianic Judaism has to offer, <laughs> it's suspicious. When you won't debate the steel men in the Christian religion, I guess you are unconsciously condemned to use straw men for the rest of your life. But to be honest, 3% of the time I hear the rabbis use a steel man, but that percent, percentage seems to be dropping day by day. I don't personally know of a better way to protect the Jewish community from the invasion of Christian ideas that are overcoming it. I really should reframe that. <laughs> I don't know of a better way to protect the Jewish community from Jewish ideas that are finally invading it. But you all insist and protect a person who debates the 10,000th 10, 10, best apologist in the world, people I, haven't even, people I haven't even heard of. Everyone who is honest with themselves knows that it has to be a discussion that is somewhat influenced by fear. I'm sorry, I had to say that. What if I lose to Dr. Brown publicly again? What will happen to Judaism? Will our, will our Judaism fall apart that we've built up for so long? What would Elijah do? Would Elijah bait the 10th best apologist in the world? Or would Elijah say, let's meet on Mount Carmel on Prime TV? I want, who sounds like that? Is it the rabbis or who is that? It's kind of funny how it is the Messianic Jews who are behaving like they are from the bloodline of Elijah, but the rabbis who don't behave like him, claim him as part of their religion. And I believe the Jewish people are realizing how chicken all your rabbis are, and more and more each day. And you are definitely not steel chickens. And I am not just speaking about Rabbi Singer. It's all the rabbis all around the world, and especially all of you in Israel, you avoid the steel men. And as I will show about Satan and oh, how our two religions differ on this character. And it's surprising that all the, let me reframe, all the fall awayers from the faith <laughs> get their first lesson from Judaism. That Satan is not an evil character. He is in fact an angel of light. <laughs> Helping God by killing, robbing, and destroying. Because, as you all will soon see, according to the rabbis, that's, that's God's will. Yep, the false frame again. That's how Tanakh frames the devil. I, I mean Satan. Or Venus. <laughs> or serpent. <laughs> These next videos are going to be about Rabbi Skoback first. Rabbi Federau. Here's the video. It's like a prosecuting attorney in a court of law where the prosecuting attorney has to get permission from the judge to do a sting operation against hum against other human beings to find out, you know, are they really as honest as they say they are? And that's exactly what we have in the in the Bible in describing, you know, what the Satan is supposed to do. Okay, the Satan obtains permission from God 
to act against Job, which is granted to him in verse 6. And the Satan has no power, no authority of his own. He's doing a job like a prosecuting attorney or district attorney in the American judicial system. And he gets permission from the judge, God, in everything he does. Tovia Singer and his <laughs> Babylonian taunt. <laughs> Isaiah compares the Babylonian king, the empire, to the planet of Venus. The planet of Venus, in a sense, the halo ben Shachar, in a sense, it, the morning star is arrogant. It's not really arrogant. It's, it's a gorgeous use of language. The planet of Venus, in a sense, goes, look at me. I know the sun is coming up. I know it's sunrise, but I'm still here and I'm never going away. And Neil Tyson. All their views on Satan, but with Neil Tyson, it's why he... He believes that there is no evidence for God, which contained within his rebuttal was the actual proof that God does in fact exist, I believe. Yes. I didn't ask that. I asked you, people, do me, you believe in God? Every description of God that I've heard holds God to be uh, all powerful, very typical, and all good. And then I look around and I see a tsunami that killed a quarter million people in Indonesia, an earthquake that killed a quarter million people in Haiti, and I see earthquakes and tornadoes and disease, childhood leukemia, and I see all of this and I say, I do not see evidence of both of those being true simultaneously. If there is a God, the God is either not all powerful or not all good. Mm, Can't be both. Good answer. Which he's in a lack of knowledge about. I don't know how two people can look at the same facts and see completely different outcomes. I see completely different things. I know the followers of Yeshua could probably care less about what these rabbis think about Satan, but if they make God in their own image and they make the Messiah in their own image, why wouldn't they make Satan in their own image? <laughs> it is so inaccurate and deceiving, their version of Satan. Thankfully, we Christians have the answers at the end of the book. Like every good textbook provides, but it is important to point out that when someone is deceiving, is deceived and deceiving the people, especially when they have the power to influence the politicians in Israel so that they can hurt our brothers and sisters in Christ who have made Aliyah. People are listening to YouTube videos and using arguments to try to sway public opinion. So let's give them some stuff to use. We are going to create a profile of Satan, who in Christianity is also called the devil, Venus, Lucifer. The rabbis, like any good liberal, which they are liberals, are very good at the weaponization of words and context. So in the next few videos, I think I have four or five planned, we'll take that away from them, their weapons, yes. But first, We'll start with Rabbi Boring. Let's go back. Very knowledgeable, though. I love listening to this guy. So the vast majority, probably even almost all Christian commentaries understand, for example, John MacArthur, you know, one of your more popular Protestant commentaries to the Christian Bible, understands this to be referring to actual Jews who reject Jesus. And because they don't, re they don't accept Jesus, even though they say they're Jews, so the Christian Bible here is saying, so you see they're not really Jews, meaning that a Jew cannot, by definition, reject Jesus. And this is consistent, this idea that these people who say they're Jews, but they're not really Jews. So this is taught throughout the Christian Bible that a real Jew is not someone who's born to a Jewish mother, for example, which would be the definition of a Jew in Jewish thought. Um, but the idea is that if you are a real Jew, by definition, you have to accept the Jewish Messiah. Speaking about Satan, 
in his video, The Synagogue of Satan, first makes his appeal to the topic of this controversial phrase, the synagogue of Satan and John MacArthur's position. Wow, John MacArthur's position. That it actually refers to Jews who reject Jesus. Whoa, I didn't know that. Now this is where the false frame that in this video just means there is no steel man being used comes in from Rabbi Scoback. Because I mean, he has to know with all those books behind him. Look at all those books. He's surrounded by books and he buys libraries. I don't know if you all know that. That this is only 4% of the truth, even if this is what John MacArthur has written. <laughs> this, John, is not by any measure the steel man on these issues. I know you guys would love to debate him. <laughs> and all Christian apologists that I know would agree with me on that statement. But quoting a very popular California past pastor is done for the sole purpose of fooling the rabbi's listeners. Because most of his listeners don't know this. They are no lack of knowledge. This is comparable to me finding a rabbi not trained in Christian or rabbinical apologetics as it pertains to Christianity and, and attacking them. I wouldn't waste my time. And my listeners would be quite confused if I did so. But not the rabbi's listeners. They think that John MacArthur is popular, that he, they think because John MacArthur is popular, that he must be, you know, great and knowledgeable on these issues. Well then, why would the rabbi quote John, you ask? And maybe you're surprised that your rabbi would waste your time. Maybe you're one of the few. But this is not his purpose, I believe. He is trying his hardest to keep the narrative of hate and misunderstanding blossoming between our two communities by highlighting a conspiracy theory, to be honest with you, that many learned Jews and learned Christians still believe that Jews who do not believe in Jesus, Jesus worship at places called synagogues of Satan. The reason why Rabbi Skobach would want the truth on this topic to be muddied, in my opinion, is because he wants salt rubbed on those old wounds. It's political. He wants you walking like sheep behind all the rabbis that are leading you astray. Remember those Christians who called you, called us the synagogue of Satan for not believing in Jesus. I know that's happened in history, and it was wrong. It's obvious that the rabbis are losing their power. I mean, they are losing their ideological capture of the Jewish people. But they still have institutional capture, so they have to use hate. And hate is their steel man. And any Christian who believes, like John MacArthur, if, if that's even what he does believe, that these passages and revelations are referring to Jews who reject Jesus solely, is himself also deceived. If the rabbis were winning, they wouldn't have to use this type of propaganda in the first place. Yeshua. Rabbis, you don't mind if I make Jesus sound a little more Hebraic, do ya? Yeshua. Yeshua in this passage about the synagogue of Satan, as you all know, is making mention to one of the first holocausts ever to happen en masse of Jews who believed in Yeshua that was perpetrated more than likely exclusively by the Pharisees or Rabbi Skobak, Singer, and Federal's religious sect. And it is not so different now, is it? You can... You can use history to prove that ancient history was in fact correct. But what is the famous phrase? When we forget history, we are doomed to repeat it. The rabbis, by trying to edit out history with their interpretation on the synagogue of Satan, go check the archaeological facts on everything that I'm saying are denying the Holocaust that their religious sect committed, who again are, are avoiding the steel men argument on the synagogue of Satan and destroyed a lot of steel, uh, steel men 
in ancient history. Which means they have presented you a straw man or a hate man, I guess. Hate man, sad man, weak man, I guess would be more accurate. What do I mean? Let me put this back in its proper frame, the synagogue of Satan. This phrase, the synagogue of Satan, is used in two churches in the Book of Revelations, Philadelphia and Smyrna. For those of you uh, who know church history, Polycarp was Smyrna's bishop. His martyrdom is pertinent to this discussion also. Now, history would tell us that most of the congregants at these two house churches were, in fact, Jews. In fact, I think most of the congregants at all these seven, uh, seven churches were, were Jews. But definitely these two churches were what we would call now Messianic Jews. The church was first built on the blood of the Jewish people. Having said that, Sardis was also being referenced as a church that was fighting against the synagogue of Satan because of this verse. I will not erase your name from the book of life. These are not nice, just nice literary words used by our Lord. They are in fact a rebuke to what the synagogue of Satan was doing to our brothers and sisters in Christ, and also a definition of what the phrase means in history, current and present. And the archeological record is our dictionary, Rabbi, not your or any other unlearned Christians or Jewish interpretation of what this phrase means. These Jews were using lawfare, coincidentally, if you believe in coincidences, like they are trying to do now in Israel. Having anyone who tries to bring a, Christ, a person to Christ who is Jewish thrown in jail for a year, wow, cowards, weak, <laughs> you can't debate. <laughs> I do not believe this to be a standalone complex, but four months before this member of the Israeli parliament proposed this bill, jailing Christians in Israel for converting Jews. Rabbi Skobak does a video of the most likely Christian phrase to be used in response to this lawfare, and probably so that all the Jewish people were reminded and pre-programmed to respond with hate and vitriol. I propose another bill to the coward ultra-Orthodox rabbi who tried to have this legislation passed so here's my proposal. Rabbi Singer keeps running and cowering in fear before Dr. Brown. He doesn't want to lose a third time. Three. I'll leave the one of the debates in the comments section. I propose, so this is the bell. Deport Rabbi Singer from Israel. We'll call it the deportation of Rabbi Singer bill. How about that? that that's what we'll call it. Bill C-24. Okay? Unless he debates Dr. Brown publicly. Dr. Brown was just in Israel and did the rabbi, scared rabbi, try to stop him in the streets like he did to Peter Abraham? Oh, no, he didn't. <laughs> Why? You must ask this question. So a prompt passing of this bill is necessary to bring this bloop forward. This would be true progress between our two communities, but I digress. This book of life in Revelation 3.5 was using loosely the Gezera Shua, which just means it was being compared to an actual book the rabbis had in their synagogues, apparently unknown to John MacArthur and most Christians. Jesus was comparing the book of life in heaven to the synagogue registry found at all synagogues in all the Roman cities that had enough Jews to support a synagogue. There's also a probable reference to the synagogue registry in 3.8 of Revelations to Philadelphia, which also uses the phrase synagogue of Satan. I know your deeds, before, be, uh, be, uh, behold, I have put before you an open door which no one can shut. Jesus was saying here that though they shut the synagogue doors to you, they cannot shut the door that I have opened to you. Now, David Stern, as you can imagine, bristles at this interpretation. 
And he says, no, he says, for sure, that's not what it means. It's not speaking about actual Jews who are now being stripped of their Jewish status because of their failure to believe in Jesus. He says that, take it at, take it at face value. They claim to be Jews, but they're not. Meaning, according to David Stern, these are non-Jews. These are Gentiles pretending to be Jews. That's who it's talking about according to David Stern. And he says it's similar to the Judaizers that you find being uh, spoken about in the book of Galatians. And um, these, are, these are people that try to get other Gentile Christians to keep the Torah. Um, and, and David Stern, and I would also parallel this to the numerous Gentile groups and individuals today claiming to be Jews. Um, you know, I, I used to go, I mean, I, I, I may return, but I used to go almost every year to the major messianic conferences here in North America. And every year I would meet many people claiming to be Jews, and they weren't in any shape, way, shape, or form. Listen very carefully. To those of you who have a little more knowledge than the rest of them, because of all of the imagery being, uh, being used here in Revelations, blotted out, open door, book of life, that is an obvious reference to the practice of culling Messianic Jews back in, early, back in the dark uh, period of Roman history which the Pharisees were chiefly responsible for committing because of this imagery. That's why God is disgusted with them and then completely rejects them and says this, Behold, I make those of the synagogue of who Satan who say that they are Jews and are not but lie, I will make them come down and bow before your feet and make them know that I have loved you. It is not because these Jews were fake Hebrew Israelites or people pretending to be Jews, which is also so common today. Remember, the New Testament calls people Jewish even when they do not believe in Jesus. It is because when you have lost all the arguments, which I would have loved to listen to, those ancient arguments at these churches, and as a Jew, you resort to killing those who you cannot overcome. Then God says enough is enough and rejects them, even as even being Jewish. A complete and utter divorce. When we all die, I am sure that when these former Jews who are being referenced to here in Revelations are brought before the judgment, we will see all the visions and beautiful things that our Lord tried to reach them with. But unlike Paul, who was a part of this synagogue and then accepted his vision of Christ on the Damascus Road, these Jews rejected their Damascus Road vision and said no to that beauty. So let's connect all of this now and wrap this up. Judaism was a protected religion in the Roman Empire. And because of that, Jews had an exemption from saying the words, Caesar is Lord. But only Jews who were written in the synagogue registry had this protection. This synagogue registry served as a book of life for our early messianic brothers and sisters. Many, many were saved by it until they were blotted out of it. And as you all know, there were debates about Gentiles also being Jewish early on before Christianity and Ju Judaism permanently separated. But once the doors were shut to the synagogue and your names were blotted out of the synagogue registry, you lost your exemption from saying Caesar is Lord, which meant unless you were one of those compromising Messianic Jews, you'd be killed by the Roman soldiers. When Jesus says that I will write on him the name of my God, maybe we'll deal with that in the next video. He is again making reference to the satanic pra practice of referring to Messianic Jews as Gentiles and killing Jews by blotting their names out of the synagogue registry. 
which Roman soldiers would ask to look at from time to time. Yes, your rabbis love the Romans. And it looks like this demonic practice is beginning to rear its ugly head again. By this time in the history of the church, the Pharisees, who these rabbis currently represent, had taken over Judaism completely by killing, by conducting a holocaust essentially of any Jew who would oppose them. Rabbi Skobach, in his video on this topic, if he does in fact know these facts, is akin to an Iranian holocaust denier, a historical revisionist who should apologize for what the Pharisees did to the early church. That would be true progress. Pass a law on that. The calling of Christians evolved in the martyrdom of Polycarp, the bishop of Smyrna. He is told to swear by Caesar or die and deny Christ. Had Christianity stayed under the watchful eye of Judaism and not had this brutal war, this part of our history might have been avoided. And though there may be a prophecy about this practice by the Pharisees beginning again, because we know this to be a future, we know this to be future looking when spoken to the Church of Philadelphia. Because you have kept my word and my perseverance, I will also keep you from the hour of testing. That hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. Since it is also this church that uses the phrase synagogue of Satan, hopefully we can avoid this before this vitriol gets out of control from those who would try to incite hatred between us. But as far as I am aware, this was the first, though extreme, version of cancel culture and censorship that happened between our two faiths. Having said that, if you disagree with the rabbis, then and now, you were thrown out of the synagogue. I guess we can update John, John's gospel to say shadow banned from the synagogues. The rabbis had already had institutional capture by this time in history, something we have to try to reverse. The Gospel of John, because it was the last book of the Bible probably written, John, its writer, even though John 21, 24 indicates that it was partially written by a scribe, or fully written by a scribe, unlike the other Gospels, got to see all this murder take place in history. John was in his late 90s when he wrote his Gospel. And he had a lot of time to digest all the things that Jesus has said to him. This is why he often says the Jews in his gospel. It's not because John was promoting anti-Semitism like your rabbis are trying to incite you against us with. It is because now looking back on his whole life with Christ, remember, he was a teenager when he was called to follow Jesus. He could see the groundwork that Satan had laid long ago so that he could control the Jewish people and start his holocaust by using the Pharisees to do it. I believe John is the only gospel to make explicit reference to being thrown out of the synagogue, which in Israel, long before these seven churches ever existed, would have meant death for any Jew, too, who would not confess Caesar as Lord. I mean, if that practice was taking place at that time. I don't think any commentary makes reference to this, and I, maybe I'm wrong about that. Because if you look like a Jew, maybe the Romans assumed you were, they will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. Kill and throw down of the synagogue used together by our Lord. This prophecy is historically confirmed in Revelation. Yet at this time, many, even among the leaders, believed in him. But because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith for fear they would be put out of the synagogue. These cowards are still putting you out of the synagogues. Get over it. Before we move on to who Satan is and build up his profile as stated in Tanakh, the steel man of all God's adversaries, created by God and given his authority by God and leashed by God. We'll look at all the misinformation in the next videos that I'm going to do and that are being spread by the Pharisees, namely Rabbi Federal and Mr. Singer and his Babylonian taught in Isaiah.